Hey, what's going on? Happy to be with you again. Tim Warner here, and I'm going to teach you how to use subagents in Cloud Code, Anthropic's AI Coding Assistant. Now, if you've been working with Gen AI, and in particular, if you work in software development to any degree or another, you're probably familiar with what agents are. Basically, a subagent allows you to parallelize your work. You're in a top level chat with a coding assistant, and we can delegate tasks to other instances of the AI that have their own custom instructions and, very importantly, their own context length. Okay, let's get into work here. Now, you do have to have a paid cloud subscription, or you could use an API key to hit the API via pay as you go. I'm in Visual Studio Code, VS Code. I've already I'm in Git Bash. You should know that Cloud Code is natively just a Bash application. So on Windows, that means WSL2, or I use Git Bash. It's an NPM command. Install the application. And as you can see in my terminal, I'm in a project called Context Engineering, and I've got a feature branch up. And my simple use case here is I want to create an agent to do housekeeping in this repo. As a tech trainer, I work in Markdown a lot and I want to auto lint these markdown files. Now I know it's a bit of a contrived example. You might think, well, Tim, isn't that something we could do with GitHub Actions or any number of different things? Yes, but hang with me here. I'm going to invoke Claude code with Claude and something that you should get used to. Well, we have to confirm that we trust the project, which I do. I'll press enter is using slash commands. And in particular, you'll want to do slash init before too long, with or without some additional text on your part describing the project. And that's important so that Claude can create a Claude MD file that reminds it of what the repo is and how it works, okay? And you can rerun init from time to time to update it. But that again gives Claude more persistent memory and you can add to that Claude.md in the root of your repo and you can get ignore it if you don't want it. Now what we want to do is work with agents. So I'm going to type forward slash agents and that brings us to our config screen. You'll note that Cloud Code ships with some built-in generic agents and as you can see I've got a user agent in my user profile. The idea is when you create these agents you can store them in the repo where they'll travel with the repository or you could create them as part of your Claude user profile. As you can see under user on Windows, I'm on Win 11. Under my user profile, there's a .cloud directory and an agent subdirectory. And that would be my Copilot Studio Builder that uses Opus available for all projects. And that's what I'm going to do with this new agent. So I'm going to press enter to create a new agent. And I want this to be personal. So I'm going to come down to two. I'm going to actually scratch that. Let me step back using escape. I'm going to put this in the project so I can show you how easy it is to maintain. I know that we could go into our home directory .cloud agents, but roll with me here. You may want to create a special purpose markdown helper or debugging or security config agent, whatever it is you want to automate and keep it in the repo for you and the rest of your team's convenience. So I'm gonna change my mind and choose project here, which goes under .cloud agents in your repo route. I'm gonna generate with Claude, which is the recommended approach. And the biggest part here is your system instructions or your custom instructions file. And I like to be meta with this. As you can see, I've got Claude desktop here and look what I did. I actually started a new Sonnet session and I said, how would you write a custom instruction for a Claude code agent whose task is to use the best node or shell tool for a job to fully link all markdown files in the current repo recursively? Ah, say that five times quickly. I'm definitely a, um, what would be the term? Stream of consciousness prompt person. I'm especially sensitive to certain markdown rules. The repo might not have a linting file, so the agent would need to create that. The agent should be able to complete its work on its own without requiring manual intervention, so it needs to be bulletproof. So I'm using the AI's knowledge in, in combination with my brain dump uh, prompt, and we get ourselves a pretty rich set of instructions here to start with. So I'm going to copy those instructions out. By the way, I don't have to do that in Claude. In Claude. If you don't have Claude Desktop, maybe you use ChatGPT or Gemini. You could do it, or we could do it here in Claude Code as far as that goes. You can switch between models, 
by using forward slash models. That's not resolving here because I'm already in the agent flow. I'm going to do a control V to paste that system message and then press enter, <coughs> excuse me, press enter to submit. Generating agent from description. It'll probably grind for a little while on that. And while it's grinding, look up here. We can confirm our subscription. I have Claude Max. Check out in the YouTube notes there. I'll put lots of helpful links, like if you don't yet have a Claude subscription, and if you want to know the specific licensing rules with Claude Code, I'll link to all of that. And you can also see our current working director. You want to double check that. And there's a slash command. I think it's slash CWD that allows you to reset your, your working directory. Because sometimes if you're working quickly, you'll find a disparity between what's in your code editor and what's in Claude code. Now, another subject for another video is how to configure model context protocol or MCP servers in Claude code. I'm happy to do that with, for you. For now, I do have MCPs in my Claude code environment. And this interface allows you to pick and choose which servers and which tools and which servers we're going to allow the agent to work with. You might have a markdown server that's especially good at MCP development, you know, and you want the agent who maybe is going to be an MCP specialist to use those tools, but not other ones. That's what this interface is all about. I'm going to hit the easy button and continue with all tools. We're asked, what model do you want to use? And this requires understanding Haiku is the fastest, least reasoning model. Sonnet is the 80% scenario, but maybe you want to bring out the big artillery and use Opus. I'm going to use Sonnet in this case. As a colorblind person, you wouldn't think that color coding makes a difference, but it actually makes a world of difference to me. I just make sure to choose a concentrated enough contrast. This gives us a summary. And we can press Enter or S to save, E to save and edit. This is fine, so I'm going to press Enter. And you might notice that in my project, I now have a markdown linter. I can change the name, too. And if I want to show the rendered markdown on the right here, you are an elite markdown quality engineer, so we're using or Anthropic and Cloud Code are using role play, which is an important prompt engineering technique with LLMs recursively lint all the files, so it's going through in exhaustive detail how this linter agent is going to work for me, okay? And so now, we, this is just the agent screen. You can press escape to go back. And the way we invoke the agent is just with our prompt. That's how I do it anyway. I will say, this repo has a lot of markdown. Please delegate full autonomous markdown linting fixing to our new markdown linting agent spawn three agents to divide and and conquer and i'll leave it at that i think you can have up to 10 of these agents running in parallel and again the value proposition with this is it's a force multiplier in terms of you manually running markdown lint yourself and getting bogged down into bug loops once you've got your agent running and working well it's just going to consistently work there's some hiccups and glitches i found that the longer you're using an agent i had was doing debugging with agents last night it can get a bit forgetful, but you know, that comes down to some of the pain points that we have with large language models and context length anyway. So what we're going to see in this case, it's going to be in triplicate because I've got three agents spawned. They're each going to have their own full context window that has injected context from our top level chat. And by default, you'll find that Claude code will foreground one of the agents and it'll tell us before too long that we can hit control B to put each agent into the background and that allows us to have our full prompt back. It looks like we've got our prompt basically up and running here. Um, while we're here, notice that the slash commands give you give you everything you need and including compact. If the session goes long, 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 you'll see your context length, the percentage coming up and up and up. You can minify and compact. Okay. Do we want to proceed? Yep. 
do we want to allow reading from tasks? Now, this is one of the things that, you know, the so-called vibe coders want to do is turn off the confirmations and let Claude Code and the agents do everything autonomously. There's a time and a place for that. It could be pretty annoying given how many folders I have in this project to have to confirm every one, especially for every agent. You know what I mean? So it's a balancing issue, a balancing act. I also, while we're looking at this, I want you to come back and see again that the idea is, let me get rid of the preview this time. Oh, it's kind of a dense paragraph there, is that we can refactor the agent's behavior over time from outside Claude code. We would just modify the markdown linter MD file and we can change its name too if we want to. Um, and remember that we can use it either in the project or we can make it part of our Claude user profile. And we could definitely manually create the appropriate folder and file structure in our user profile. You don't have to use the Claude code builder application. That's just meant to be a convenience factor for us. And again, I find that Claude code is really nice at giving us a running uh, task list of what it's doing. And again, this is more complicated because we have more than one copy of the agent instantiated and we can see the color coding like I mentioned before. Agent 2 was dealing with examples and labs and it got blocked. Another promise of agentic AI solutions is that the agent is self-correcting and self-reflective so it runs into a problem it will try to solve the problem. Now again as the human in the loop it's up to us to keep our eyes on this so that if the agent is in a loop, that you know, sort of an endless loop, or we find that the agent is going off in the wrong direction according to our experience and expertise, that's for us to come in and hit escape to give additional instructions. And like I said, it says, um, let's see here, two background tasks going on. Control B, it's not showing us foreground stuff yet. It's taking it a little bit to, to get spun up, but I'll eventually be able to control B and that gives me full access to my foreground chat that has its own context length. And that means I can be doing stuff interactively in my app at the top level while in parallel, I have my three agents scouring through all of the markdown files recursively throughout the entire directory. It looks like we've already got some files showing up looks like it created a markdown lint enhanced json file that comes directly from the agent's instructions as we've seen previously we can see our token count happening we can see our runtime eventually we'll be able to see our context but i'll also before i end the video i don't want it to go too long i'll show you how to use the context control where you can visually see where you're at and I'm sure there's a way to do that inside your sub-agents, but I'm going to show you for today how to do it in our top level. Yeah, it looks like that we're running into some problems here with sandbox restrictions on Claude's part. Again, it's good to know this. This is the first time I've created this kind of an agent. So again, it's the idea is there's going to be some debugging and optimization before the agents are working reliably. Just don't think it's a vibe code thing. We're set and forget and everything is perfect. That's not been the case for me at all. Okay, so looking at what it wants to do, it's going to run markdown lint auto fix, which is the closest approximation it can get to what I wanted. And I'm going to allow it to run those commands. Again, it's spawning additional terminals and clotting, as you can see. The verbs here never cease to bring a smile to my face. I don't find them corny or goofy at all. Claude, Anthropic folks, if anybody's watching this video, double thumbs up on that. Oh, okay. Well, that was fast. It looks like the agents accomplished, they, they each took a, a part of the, the code files. And I, I'm always one who does measure twice, cut once. I'm going to say, please delegate to our markdown agent. I'll say just one instance this time. Quickly enumerate all the star.md files because I suspect you did, in fact, miss some. Okay, So I'm going to do another top-level delegation here. 
And this is what I was mentioning before, control B to run in the background. My foreground is kind of locked. If I submit any prompts, they're just gonna go into a queue. So let me do a control B, and that brings me to my foreground, and I'm gonna say, hey, give me a quick numeric total of all MD files in this repo, recursive. Come on, Claude, <laughs> recursive. So this is just to demonstrate the foreground, background nature of working with these agents. And we get a response. It looks like I've got 86. I forgot to ask for a dir tree, but this list is almost as good. I think we're good at this point. Let me show you if I do forward slash context. Anthropic does so many cool things with Cloud Code. It'll give us a graphical picture of how we're doing here at the top level. And I'll assign it to you for homework, but after I stop recording, I'm going to ask Claude about how we can enumerate the context visualization for our sub-agents when they're running as well. I'm sure it's quite, quite uh, intelligible or intuitive, I think is what I want to say. Uh, it's asking me for confirmation. I, I want to get that context before I end the video. Come on, Claude Code. The sub-agent might have come to the foreground again. Yeah, yeah, it finished. It's still ideating. Come on now. I'm going to do escape to interrupt, and I'm going to do forward slash context. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. So our overall token length based on the model, how much as a percentage is being used by the system prompt and guardrails, system tools. This is behind the scenes stuff. Custom agents. Well, there's a report, custom agent. Memory files, messages, free space, and then auto compact. And you can always run a compact directly. I'm going to do control C once and control C twice to exit Claude code. Well, there you have it. A gentle introduction to sub agents in Claude code. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you. Catch you later.